what's up dudes we're down here at the boat ramp I'm about to show you guys what it takes to launch one of these suckers anchor the boat right there that looks about good and that is how i personally launch my bass boat hello and welcome what's up everybody thank you for clicking on the video today i'm going to show you guys how to launch and load a bass boat all by yourself this is actually a video that i've been asked to do several times in the past by some of you guys out there so if you are one of the people that asked me to show you the process this video is for you a couple things that i want to mention before we head down to the boat ramp if you didn't see my last video where we unboxed and took an up close and personal look at the new vega frog from six Sense fishing go check that out showed you guys all the colors that I got. I scored 15 out of the 20 colors that were available and busted them all open. Gave you an up close and personal look there on camera. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It was chock full of heaters. You know the deal, heaters only from the six and the new Vega Frog is smoking. Last thing, short and sweet here for the intro before we rip off. If this is your first time watching, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're on a mission trying to hit 100,000 and obtain the elusive YouTube silver play button. Help me color in the bar all the way and get to 100K if you have Fun hanging out with me today out there on the water if you like the video subscribe to the channel and turn those notification bells on catch all my future content i put out new fishing videos here all the time on this channel here in the garage in front of the tackle wall and out there on the water today's video is going to be a little bit different like i said i'm going to be showing you guys how to launch and load a bass boat all by yourself a couple quick disclaimers before we head out there i was shooting everything by myself with one hand on the camera and one hand on the boat so bear with me also this is just my process this is how i go about launching my bass boat there are multiple ways to do this and i'm sure there are other people out there that have a different process that's okay there are several right ways to do this this is just how i do it i'm going to show you guys my personal steps to rolling through launching a bass boat and putting the bass boat back on the trailer and getting it back to the house if you're all by yourself and that's pretty much going to be the name of the game today so thank you for tuning in i appreciate you guys but we're going to head down to the boat ramp now and i'll show you guys how to put beetle juice in the water let's go what's up dudes we're down here at the boat ramp I'm about to show you guys what it takes to launch one of these suckers this is just how i do it somebody else out there may have a little bit different technique but when i'm by myself this is how i go about launching my bass boat i thought some of you guys might be interested in seeing the process might even help somebody out there so i'm gonna show you guys what i do when i'm getting ready first things first let's strap the trolling motor plug it in 12 volt source up here at the front flip the ltrex on come down below the boat remove the safety cable I'm gonna come over here to the hummingbird unit, remove the screen protector, switch on our main power, then power on the unit. I'm gonna toss the screen protector in the locker back here. I already have my Coast Guard approved PFD attached over here to the kill switch. You always wanna run your kill switch and wear your PFD when you're underway. Now we need to come back here to the back of the boat and we need to remove the trailer straps. Undo this little buckle. There's one. Now while I'm right here, I always just go down and first thing, put the plug in. Don't forget that little guy. Next thing, this is your transom support for while you're towing the boat. Come back here. Undo the buckle. Raise the motor. Remove the transmit support. Lower the motor back down a little bit, not too far. We come over here to the other side and remove the other buckle. Go throw these in the truck. And that's pretty much it. Now we're ready to dump her in the water. So we got the Trolling motor, unstrapped, plugged in. Safety cable off the front of the boat with the winch still attached. Hummingbirds on, the transom straps are removed. Tow support is removed. Motor is trimmed halfway down. The plug is in the boat. Now it's time to get her wet. Back the boat down the boat ramp. Now, one thing I want to mention is depending on how steep your boat ramp is and how much you trust your winch, 
some people might consider leaving that safety cable attached until the boat is in the water. That's up to you. This is just how I do it. Of course, you want to always make sure you're properly maintaining your boat trailer so that you don't have any issues. But now we're going to dump the boat in and I'm keeping an eye on it in my rearview mirrors. And I'm going to go just until I see the rear end of the boat getting a little floaty. So that should be just where the fenders go underwater, right about there. Throw it in park, engage your emergency brake. Now we're gonna come back here to the boat. I don't wanna get my feet wet, so I'm gonna do a little kung fu climb. Now we're gonna go over here. Pull the winch, release the winch lock, loosen the strap, detach it from the boat, and now we're ready to actually put the boat in the water. Now what I do, now you could just go back there and start the motor and power the boat off the trailer, but what I do, sort of help preserve the carpet on the bunks and just make it a little bit easier, is I grab the boat by the nose here and I just roll it back off the roller. It's pretty easy once it's floating, as you can see. And then I just step on the spare up onto the top of the boat. And now we're in the water and we're basically floating. Put your trim down. Start the motor. Kick her in reverse. And we're off the trailer. We're officially launched. Now the next part is sort of up to you. A lot of people will tie their boat to the dock. Some people will beach their boat, which is what I do a lot of the time. But today, we're going to utilize this fancy trolling motor. And we're actually just going to spot lock the boat out here by the dock. So I'm going to throw it in neutral, kill the motor, come up here to the front, and deploy the Ultrax. Make sure your handle is out of the way of the pedal. Next thing we need to do is grab the Ultrax remote, switch it on. Make sure it's paired with the motor. Now, we'll just go drop ourselves off at the dock. This is the cool part. Now we'll use the uh, Ultrex here. And we'll just go ahead and anchor the boat right there. That looks about good. You see the anchor icon is on. See the Ultrex working to keep the boat in place. Now we just go park the truck and we're ready. I can see some bluegill up here shallow. Bunch of bait fish right here. Time to go catch some fish and that is how you launch a boat by yourself. I'm gonna go fishing, hopefully catch some fish. But when we get back to the ramp, I'll show you guys how to do the opposite. Take that bad boy out of the water and get her back to the house. I just wanna show you guys that quick a little rundown of how I personally launched my bass boat. Got the Ultrax remote right here. Put one last look on the boat, make sure she looks secure. Everything looks good, it's really calm. I don't see anybody else out on the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the truck back up the boat ramp, park the trailer, and then I'll show you guys how I get back on the boat. If you guys don't know how to back up a trailer, the main idea is to follow the trailer with the truck. And uh, there are probably a bunch of tutorial videos out there on how to back up a trailer. I'm not going to teach you guys that in this one right here. I've been doing it ever since I was a little kid, but it's pretty easy once you get the muscle memory down. Start getting your brain to work backwards. Grab my phone. Finish off my Zevia. Grab the Ultrex remote. Kill the truck. Lock her up. As you guys can see, we still have an anchor icon. Remote is still connected to the Ultrex. Boat's still floating down there. We're looking good so far. Let's keep it rolling. Go ahead and turn the spot lock off. Start manually controlling the boat now. That's what we're gonna do. Just drive her over here to us. Come here, girl. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it right there. Go ahead and use the remote one last time. Push us out away from the dock. 
And that is how I personally launch my bass boat. It's not the only way. I'm not saying it's the right way. That's just how I do it. Thought I'd share that with you guys. I'm gonna rip off and go catch some fish. And when we get back here, I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do the opposite. Take the boat out of the water, get her back to the house. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy that little breakdown of how I launch my bass boat. I'm gonna go catch me some fish. Nice. Came up and smoked the bull shad. Chunk. That's the way. Oh. Oh, come back here. That's the way to start the day. Yes. So cool when you can watch him come up and eat a swim bait, man. It is awesome. He's hooked with two different trebles. You weren't going anywhere, were you, buddy? First one on the day on the bull shad, and he cracked it, dude. That was nice. That was fun. That was what I'm after right there. Sort of hoping I could come out here and throw the bigger baits today. Nice little chunk on the bull shad. Let's let him go. Found one eating. Ready, buddy? keep it going he ate it right here in front of me too he wanted that thing too much fun bull shad buster he never seen one of those before he had to have him a bite he had to take him a bite he never seen one of these bad boys here's some fish busting back off here in the pocket might be a good sign yeah, I'll watch that dude come up and eat it these water lands Give me that aqua vision. He yoinked it. He yoinked it under. There was a follower, certified. Crazy, playtime's not over, son. Playtime's over, you guys hear that? Shoot. I hate to break it to you, buddy. But playtime's just getting started out here for me. We only got one fish in the oak, there he is right there. He's right under the boat. Right there. I know you guys saw that. That was cool. He was on this bull shad, but he didn't commit to it. That was a nice fish. Would have been stoked to get that one in the boat. He didn't eat. There was one on it right there. He came up so fast and just looked like he was about to strike it, but then he just turned around. Dang, that was a fast flash. He was right under it. He didn't eat it. 
Oh man, it's hard out here for a pimp. It's definitely been tough out here. I'm, I think I'm just on the wrong part of the lake, to be honest with you. I haven't really found any fish. Just a couple stragglers that wanted to follow. One eater. There's got to be a wolf pack sitting somewhere. I'm just, uh, I'm not getting on them, boys. one on it it's a little dude look at him oh it's a bluegill two little bluegill there and they were like making the same motion as the catwalk just back and forth back and forth back and forth that was funny little yeets bluegill are hungry there's one right here in front of the boat yes come on jump for me get up here buddy on that catwalk smoke fish number two Two fish makes a video. Catwalk saves the day just after I got done talking a little noise on her. Chill out, buddy. I'm going to get you unhooked. Came up and smacked it. Right in front of the boat. Save the day. Two fish makes a video. I ain't mad at it. Later, dude. First sign of life in hours. He cracked it right in front of the boat. Yeet. All right, so as you guys can see, we're back at the boat ramp now. I'm gonna show you guys how to put the boat back on the trailer by yourself. A couple things I wanna mention really quick. If you don't have an Ultrax, you can't spot lock. So you can tie up to the dock, use your fender and just tie a rope to one of the cleats on the dock. Or you could beach the boat if you have a kill guard. I have a kill guard. Normally what I'll do is I'll just bump the nose of the boat up onto the beach. But today we're gonna be using the Ultrax. Keep her spot locked out here in some deeper water. All these rollers rolling in and uh, yeah, it's gonna be the deal. So. Let me get uh, on the dock and go get the truck, back it down the ramp, and I'll show you guys the rest of the process taking this boat out of the water. All right, boat spot locked. You go ahead and hold it right there. Go grab the truck. Make sure you don't forget your keys in the boat. I got them in my pocket, so I'm good to go. And it was a tough day out there on the water, boys. Whew. Boat looks secure, but she's rocking. All the cows rolling through, chunking rollers as per usual. Get this trailer down the ramp and get this boat out of the water, Mike. Back in the trailer down by itself is a little bit harder than back in the boat down, but you get it. Now I'm going to back the trailer into the water to where the fenders, not quite as much as when I was putting it in, to where the fenders are sticking out of the water a good little bit so that I can actually drive the boat up onto the bunks. Actually looks pretty good right there. Let's go get the boat. Two fish in the boat. Man, what a grind. It's been like six hours. Tough. Drive this thing back over here like the Batmobile. Get back on the trailer and get back to the house. Here she comes, boys. Simple as that, quick and easy. Now we just drive this bad boy back onto the trailer, get onto the house. Yee! All right, show you guys the rest of the process. Let's get it. Start her up. I start 
start trimming it up before I get to the trailer. Hmm. Say what? Thank you. Oh yeah, thanks man. It's handy. thing you want to do is make sure she's on there straight should be good to go drive the boat I'll show you a couple things once I get this pulled back up the ramp but you want to drive the boat all the way up to where the tow hook hits the motor in the front reconnect your safety cable the last step before I pull it up the ramp. Make sure you get that trim, that motor trimmed up. Here we go. Up the ramp she goes, boys. Away she goes. All right, now for the finishing touches. The last few steps, do everything we did earlier except in reverse. So you wanna grab your transom straps and your transom support. Keep those handy. Like I was saying there, as we were rehooking the boat, one thing you wanna do is you wanna drive the boat up onto the trailer until this right here gets all the way to the roller as far as you can. Make sure you connect your safety cable before you drive back up the ramp. Next thing I always do is strap the trolling motor back down, unplug it, switch it off. We'll head back here to the back of the boat. Same thing as before, just in reverse. Put the first strap on. These don't need to be super tight, but snug, you know. They don't have to be freaking torqued down with the Hulk power, but you don't want them dangling around and potentially falling off either. So, you know, they should kind of snap down. And you want to make sure you remove your drain plug. Good old Skeeter, no water inside. Not a leak on this boat. Then one thing you want to do, especially if you have zebra mussels in your lake, Put your motor all the way down, drain that water out of your lower unit because there could be zebra mussel larvae in there. And if you go to another body of water, you'll be dragging them around and putting them in other lakes. And trust me, you don't want them in your lake. So after that, raise the motor back up, grab your transom saver down here onto this roller right in the middle, put this part here. there like that snug it down not too much just enough to keep it tight bring your strap back around the motor then you want to get your other strap come over here to the other side and reinstall it as well sorry if you guys couldn't see I'm kind of doing this all by myself and filming with the chest rig snap that down Put the Velcro back around. And then the last couple things I do, come up here, turn the hummingbird off. Once it's shut down, you can kill the main power, take the key out, put it in your pocket. Then I'll come over here and undo my kill switch. Grab the hummingbird cover out of the rod locker stow my PFD cover up the bird and then the last thing I usually do is I put my rods back in the rod locker but I'm gonna spare you guys and uh, yeah rods go back in the rod locker the boat is now safe and secure back on the trailer 
ready to be towed back to the house. Some extra bonus things you can do when you get back to the boat ramp. Remember, there are crazy people in the world and you never know who might have messed with your stuff while you were out on the water. So give everything a good look. Make sure everything's still secure. Sometimes I'll grab the trailer like this, yank up on it, make sure it's still nice and solid and attached. Everything's good to go. We're off the water. This bad boy's ready to go back to the house. Give her one good look over, make sure your tires aren't flat. You're good to go. And that, my friends, is how I launch and load a bass boat by myself. There's nothing to it. It's easy. It can be a little bit intimidating if you've never done it before, but don't let that stop you. Find a time when the ramp isn't busy. Go down there and just practice. And uh, yeah, gotta just dive in and get it done. Don't be scared. Nothing to it, guys. Anybody can launch a boat. Well, I don't know about that, man. I'm gonna go ahead and take that one back. There are some jack wagons out there that have no idea what they're doing and they wait until everybody's lined up at the boat ramp trying to either put their boat in or take their boat out before they try to learn but don't do that make sure you uh wait for a time that isn't busy if you don't know what you're doing and you need some practice but with a little bit of time a little bit of effort patience stay calm follow those steps i just showed you you'll be able to launch and load a boat no problem this is actually my third boat guys i had a bow rider just an open bow maxim after that i sold that boat was absolutely in love with being out on the water and I bought a Yamaha jet boat and had that boat for six years awesome boat Yamaha makes a great boat Skeeter boats happens to be owned by Yamaha I don't know if you guys knew that or not but there's a little inside info for you and uh, yeah had that boat for six years love that boat but you guys know what happened I started fishing started falling back in love with fishing started fishing every single day before you knew it, I had my eyes on the prize and I was after a bass boat. Got Beetlejuice back there and uh, had to learn kind of like the new strategy for a new boat three different times. So there's nothing to it. I've never really had any issue loading or unloading any of my three boats. Like I said, it just takes patience, a little practice. And if you know how to back up a trailer, been doing that ever since I was a kid so that definitely helps man if you if you don't know how to back up a trailer go practice that in an empty parking lot somewhere until you can practically drive your truck backwards with the trailer attached that'll really help you out but once you get it down once you do it a couple times and you get the steps down in your head nothing to it super important not to forget anything you know it's really important not to forget to take the transom straps off to put the plug in the boat to get your PFD ready. Make sure you wear that kill switch. Make sure you wear that PFD anytime you're underway. Boating is dangerous. You fly out of the boat while you're going down the lake and you think, oh, I'm a good swimmer. Man, you got another thing coming. So just be safe. Anytime you're driving the boat, make sure you have your life vest on. Make sure you have your kill switch attached. And uh, yeah, safety first, man. No shame in my game. I don't let the goofy life vest bother me. I wear that thing anytime I'm running down the lake. So you guys should too, man. Take care of yourselves and stay safe out there on the water. There's a couple more steps that I do once I get my boat off the lake. I'm fortunate enough to live right here by the boat ramp. The boat ramp is literally a mile from my driveway. So when I get back to the house, I wipe the boat down. We'll go over that once I get there. But if you don't live close to the boat ramp, Something you need to be doing every time you get off the water is wiping your boat down. You need to take your rags and your spray with you. And as soon as you get that thing off the water, don't let those water spots dry on there for long. Give her the old rub down and it'll keep your boat looking new. Something that I always do every single time is wipe my boat down front to back. Hull, motor and all. Take care of your stuff guys and it'll take care of you. We're almost back to the house now. I'll catch up with you guys there. And I'll wipe down the boat and put the rods back in the rod locker, put the cover back on her and she'll be protected and ready to ride another day. All right guys, as you can see, we got the boat back in the driveway. Go ahead and show you guys how to take this thing off the truck best I can with one hand.
don't want her going anywhere once she's off the truck. Now, we can go ahead and remove our safety pin, lift the latch, remove the emergency cable, remove the safety tow cables, and remove our plug for our lights. She's ready to go. Lift. Make sure you got good clearance, then you can drive away. We're still not done though. Got a couple more steps before we can be completely done for the day. I'll show you those now. Like I said, I gotta wipe the boat down, put the rods in the rod locker, get all my gear out of the boat, put the cover back on it. This video ain't done yet. Thank you guys for tuning in. I know this is a little different than what we normally do, but some of you guys have asked for this video. So if you're one of the people that asked me to show you how to launch and load a boat, this one's for you. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Catch all my future fishing content. Let's go give Beetlejuice the rub down. Why, Pete? This is the best part about getting home. I'm showing <laughs> people how to launch and load a bass boat by yourself. I only caught two fish all day. Yeah. It was tough. So you had to give them some sort of education. Hey, I was gonna do it anyway, but yeah, it just happened to be on a slow day, so. Nice. It worked out. Good to go. All right, let's finish this job. Get the rods put up, get the gear out of the boat. Then we'll give her a bath and get her covered up, ready for the next day of fishing. Just finished getting all my gear out of the boat. I'm gonna go ahead and take the hummingbird off now. Disconnect the connector, loosen the ram mount. It's tough to do this with one hand, so I'll be, whoa, I'll be, I'll be right back with you. No problem. I always bring my graph in off the boat. Never leave it out here. These things are expensive. Crackhead might steal it. All right, the next step is to give Beetlejuice the old sponge bath. This right here, I swear by this. This is 50-50 water and white vinegar with just a dash of Dawn dish soap. Guys, you don't need any fancy sprays or polishes to keep your boat clean as long as you wipe it down really quick after you get it out of the water. This right here will keep it looking new. Beetlejuice still looks as crispy as the day I got her and all I've ever used is my own homemade cheap mix like this right here. So let's give her the spray and wipe her down. Usually start back here on this section. Make sure you get down there on the bottom below the water line. Spray the motor down as well. And I go up here about halfway. Hit all that with the spray. Now I'm just gonna wipe all this down. You get the idea. We're just gonna do that for the whole boat. Give her the old wash down. She'll be good to go to throw the cover back on. You guys need a little wash down too. Just your everyday distilled white vinegar. Really good for removing water spots. Let's finish up. It's hot out there now. Whew. All right, as you guys can see, I wipe down Beetlejuice top to bottom, front to back. I do this every time my boat comes out of the water. It's what it takes if you want to keep them looking new. If you let those water spots dry in the sun into your gel coat, it'll be so much more difficult to get that off of there. You have to go through a whole lot more work than just taking the time to wipe your boat down. The last step, throw the cover back on. I lied, there's two more steps. You gotta plug the boat back in. Always keep your boat on power anytime it's not on the water. And there it is guys. Beetlejuice is cleaned and covered and ready for another day out there on the water.
All right, and there that was, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little bit different style video today showing you how to launch and load a bass boat all by yourself. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this is just how I do it. That's my process. Sometimes I'll use the kill guard and beach the boat, but for this one, I wanted to show off the capabilities of the Ultrex. Use that spot lock. Take a little bit of a risk there by hopping off the boat and leaving it floating. I wouldn't recommend that you do that. I have to advise that if you do choose to use your spot lock feature on your trolling motor, you do so at your own risk but everything worked out well for me. Normally, I would just beach the boat with using the kill guard, just nudge it up onto the shoreline, but I wanted to show off the capabilities of the Ultrex and uh, make the video a little bit more interesting for you guys. I hope you enjoyed. If this helped you out in any kind of way, click the thumbs up button. That'll help YouTube show this video to more people, maybe reach a wider audience and more people can see the breakdown of how to launch a bass boat. Also gave you guys a little bit of history on my personal boat ownership, how I got into boating, how long I've been doing it, etc. So I hope you enjoyed uh, hanging out with me today. If you did, you know the deal. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Help me color in the bar. Hit that 100K and obtain the elusive YouTube silver play button. I would love to have you guys riding along with us over here on this channel. Thank you so much to everybody who has already chosen to subscribe. As always, shout out to Six Sense Fishing and Waterland. If you guys are in the market for some awesome fishing tackle, maybe a Vega Frog, a Curve 55 crankbait, any of the rods that you see me using out there on the boat, check out SixSenseFishing.com and use my code JR10 for 10% off of everything on the website. Also, JR10 at waterlandco.com is going to give you 35% off of the same fishing optics that I use while I'm out there on the water. Angler born quality built polarized lenses, save big. If you use that code JR10 at checkout on waterlandco.com, it's going to give you over $50 off of your order while the launch sale is still going on. So if you're interested in some good sunglasses, those are the ones that I use, the Waterlands. You guys can scoop some for yourself and save some money there as well. It's also an excellent way to support the channel. If you choose to use my code with either six cents or Waterland. Take a screenshot of the confirmation order that you will receive from either company. Head on over to Instagram and shoot me a DM at the Justin Royal and I will give you a shout out on my Instagram. Everybody who uses my code gets a shout out. It's just a way for me to pay it forward, give you some public recognition and say thank you for supporting the channel. I also encourage you to go down below, check that video description, read around. There are multiple ways down there to save. You can sign up for the Super 6 sack and use my code JR10 Super 6 and that will give you $10 off of your first sack. Speaking of the Super 6 sack, I believe believe the next video you guys are going to see from me will be the August 2020 Super 6 Sack unboxing. So sub to the channel, click those notification bells on and stay tuned for that video coming at you live and direct in full effect soon right here on this channel. But that's about all I got for you today. That about does it. That about wraps her on up. So I'm going to say goodbye for now and I'll see you on the next one.